Welcome to the second quarterly update for the status of Sword and Coin, Wand and Grail. So this covers the progress that happened on the project for third quarter of 2022. Jumping right into it. Um, Please hold while I find something that can be used to illustrate part one. Okay, here we go. So this white, it looks like a diamond to you. It's actually a octahedron. It's not shaded. Um, represents an agent, which would be either a player party or an NPC party that moves about the overworld performing actions. Now, that is not a new thing. Those were implemented and showed off in the previous update. But what is new is this. Um, there is now a framework for carrying out and queuing orders for these. Uh, right now it's very simple, it just, it has a destination, moves towards it in a relatively straight line. And you may note that it moves four times and then pauses. That is due to the that is due to the essentially day-night cycle. It's not really a proper day-night cycle, but for having interrupt actions, it will spend part of the day setting camp. So that is what is causing the pauses there. So that is pretty much it for that. Now let's go back to the world map as a whole. Now this next feature is something that is difficult to display because it's not something that's present. It's something that is no longer present. Um, so on this, this viewing mode, you can clearly see these seams where the world regions meet up. And in previous versions of the program, there was a glitch in the noise generation code that resulted in the terrain not matching at the seams. That has been resolved, so those seams are no longer present. Not something I can show because by definition it's not there. Um, there is another change that is rather visible in comparison to the previous version. Uh, you may note there is not as much variation in the terrain. There's a lot more of this light green sparse forest and not as much of the denser forests and or you've got some grassland here but there's pretty much no desert. This is due to a change in the um some changes in the code that gets the slope of a particular point and part of this was fixing a bug but part of this was also it changes the way the noise is the slope return value is scaled and since this was a very recent change that i made only within this past week so i have not yet um changed the terrain determination code to use the new values. So that is why the terrain is a lot more monotonous. Um, and then the final thing we have, let's see if we have a good thing. Um, we have here, this is the beginnings of the tactical scale terrain display. Um, 
this is going to be the basis for both exploration and combat. Or, I say exploration, obviously, there is the overworld exploration, which was the previous one. This would be for the exploration of dungeons. Um, both of those take place on the same time scale, or not time scale, uh, distance scale. The time scale is what differs because it would be either real time for um, either real time for the exploration mode or turn based for the tactical combat mode. Um, so in the previous video, the goal for this quarter was going to be to have the general framework for exploring dungeons. Having a character moving it around through the dungeon was supposed to be done by today. It was not. Um, you might see that there is nothing to control here other than turning the camera, and that in itself is the proper camera for this mode hasn't been implemented yet. This is actually still using the terrain or the globe camera from the globe viewing mode. Um, the camera for this mode would actually be more of a scrolling version on the idea that these... So this terrain would be from this corner to this corner, or pretty much any of these. It's You can see it's a rhombus, so that's two equilateral triangles which are 220 feet on each edge. So the idea is that several of these would be generated to give you either the place to explore or fight. And so you would need to scroll side to side for that. And that's what has not been implemented yet, um, nor the character to go on it. Um, so essentially what going into the fourth quarter, the original goal was going to be to have the tactical stuff done in that quarter. The change being made here to the goal is I'm going to be working on that, both of them in tandem. So the next thing to be done is to add characters here to control. And I would implement both the exploration controls and the tactical mode controls just for moving around on this terrain. Then I would implement buildings, just the exterior of the buildings on the idea that you put a building up there and that will be the code to test if the character, the order you're trying to give the character would move it into a solid object rather than just across the top of this terrain which is continuous there's always a value for it so then after that it would put entries into the building which would just be a single room handle that then multiple rooms within a building and then at that point that's where the exploration mode is pretty much all done and from there it would be just implementing the combat itself and so that is the current plan going forward into the fourth quarter and then just uh, this color scheme I'll just talk about that it's basically um, the dark green is the flat regions and then as it goes to a gradient of about one half slope, that's this yellower region. It does a fade toward that. Then going towards a slope of one, it goes to this brown. And then any slope above one is this gray. So that's just coloration of the idea of thick grass getting thinner as the slope increases, then going to just bare dirt and then bare rock. Uh, the, you may note it is very stretched here. 
Um, that is because it just generates one pixel with the slope of each point. Um, this is a one point per five feet. So there are five foot equilateral triangles and there is one pixel of texture for each point right now. So this is actually a very small texture. It's 64 by 64, but it only uses 45 of that because of the size of this. Um, right now, this is just placeholder. It will eventually be changed to something that looks a lot better, but I just needed something to show off the gradients. And um, yeah, so that's placeholder. It'll be changed eventually but it's not a super high priority compared to changing the actual interactive parts. The last thing that's going to be covered is in the previous video, I mentioned another goal is to implement the features from a previous version of this program, which are currently not present. Those being runoff rivers on the globe and the society level stuff, you know, kingdoms, nations, cities, the stuff that the player would be interacting with. Um, those are probably not going to happen this year. Next year, what I'm looking at is a primary goal of taking all of this alpha level stuff and adapting it to be more game one, you know, at a proper menu screen make it so you control over only one character rather than just I can control any agent right now. Making it so there's actually stuff to interact with. And so that's probably something that the society level stuff will be implemented along with that. That will probably also come with the fix to the very round continents, which I would like to implement a fix for. And so that is the current state of the project and the goals going forward into the next three months and a bit beyond.